New heights in relations between the United States and Cuba. They have signed an aviation pact that will restore scheduled airline service. CCTV's Roy Ruttenberg reports. The agreement was months in the making, dating back to December 2014, when the Cuban and U.S. presidents announced their intentions to normalize relations. Easing travel between the two countries, limited for more than half a century, would inevitably be part of any progress. Currently, there are around 20 charter flights each day between the two neighbors, their shores only 150 kilometers apart. The signing in Havana on Tuesday of a memorandum of understanding between the Cuban transport minister and his American counterpart paves the way for as many as 110 daily commercial flights. With this agreement, commercial airlines from both countries will be able to additionally set up partnerships between them, such as code sharing and airplane leasing, between them or with airlines from other countries. The reestablishment of scheduled services demonstrates our continued commitment to strengthening the ties between the people of the United States and the people of Cuba. Immediately after the ceremony, the U.S. Department of Transportation opened up the bidding process for aviation routes. Several American air carriers welcomed the move and said they intend to get on board. That may mean thousands more Americans visiting the Caribbean island nation. Though it's unclear how enforcement will be handled, some restrictions will remain in place because of a U.S. economic blockade on Cuba. Even as officials were inking the deal in Havana, a top Cuban minister was in Washington, telling American business leaders the blockade has to go. Rodrigo Malmierca says Cuba has a plan for more than $2 billion worth of foreign direct investment each year. The U.S., he said, can have some of it or none of it. We are not looking for a pattern of dependence of mm -hmm. one or other market. We don't want to come back to the dependency of the U.S. market, but we can't, or we don't want either to have it with Russia or with China or with France or with Spain. No, we want to have a diversified uh, economic relationship. He said Cuba does not discriminate against American companies and blamed American lawmakers for upholding decades-long obstacles. Ultimately, I think the Congress needs to be educated better about what predominantly the American public, the American farmer, the American telecommunications company, the American innovation company, what they want is an end to these sanctions. The fact the minister is here, she said, is already a step forward. The Obama administration says it has done all it can in the face of a Republican-led Congress opposed to its actions. On Wednesday, U.S. regulators will meet with the Cuban trade minister in the second round of economic talks. He's hoping to convince them they can still do more. Rowie Ruttenberg, CCTV in Washington.